In the bottom right hand side, he is sponsored by Team KAP, which is something super French and I cannot pronounce. He is the blue Zerg player for France. It's Denver. And it's opponent in the left hand side. The second oldest player in e in this EU tournament. Playing for Starcom, representing Ukraine. It's Papa Cass. Who's the oldest okay, player so playing with? My quick maps are complete. Okay. Denver has advanced. Yes. Uh, he cannot fail to advance. However, he is still playing for a spot in the winner bracket, yes. uh, which does rely on Showtime losing his game. But to Showtime Arctur. is playing against Arctur, so it'll be interesting Dude, to see Arctur's how that so good. Has, Yeah, he's been very, very solid in this tournament, so collecting three match wins, which is, you know, it's he's he's beaten some real good players. He beat Koss, mm -hmm. who notoriously is a bit of a, a, a tough nut to crack when it comes yeah. to Team D. He took down Gung Fu Banda, who's also been playing really, really well lately. So really? that's a, a pretty crazy win. And also beating Spots, who is uh, the, the most newcomery of all the newcomers yeah. in, uh, in this tournament. His first ever Premier Tournament. Yeah, it's it's nice to see him here. He hasn't really set the world alight, but he's also looked pretty decent when we've seen him mm -hmm. play. He took the game off of Gung Fu Banda, uh, which is a pretty impressive accomplishment. Gung Fu Banda pretty good at his mirror matchup as well. Yeah. And uh, he also took a game off uh, off of Koss. So shout outs to Spots, who, uh, yeah, I mean, there there are no easy qualifying brackets in in right. Europe. So and, and to put this in context, all of these players like uh, were complaining that the vetoes were taking a little long and stuff like that. It was like two minutes. Spots didn't even know how. Like, he was that new to all of this. He didn't know how the veto process worked. He didn't know what channels to be in. This was like his first ever big tournament. Um, and he came through and he won his first ever map and his first ever Premier event. And I cast that and I was over the frickin' moon. Um, because I love to see these newcomers get something. And sure, yeah, he didn't have a great event. But there were a few players that didn't that maybe could have. No one expected Goblin to do a T-Stun. Sorry, Leon. Um... Uh, and um, it's plenty more, you know, this is just one tournament, one stop uh, in the circuit. This game so far though, Penguin, what are you seeing? Thus far, everything's looking pretty normal. I'm just really keeping my eye on like what what Denver's gonna do about these back minerals. I'm interested to see when he mines those out, if ever, because that's one of the reasons why this could be a bit of a tough yes. map here for Zerg, especially versus Terran. If the Terran goes for like a Marine tank push and you haven't cleared out those minerals, it can be very, very difficult to deal with that. So, um, so far the Reaper from costuming Pretty decent job. He gets a couple link kills. That's that's really quite nice. And um, in the meantime, though, Denver gets down that third hatch. That's the most important thing for him right now. The Naturals finishing up for Koss. And everything's just looking pretty stock standard up until this point. And uh, this is, you know, in, in, in ZBT, if there's nothing super weird in the first, like, two minutes, you're not really going to have too much to comment on for the first five. So uh, we'll see just whether or not the Reaper can get anything done. Koss has been really, really annoying with this Reaper. Yeah, he has, and he's going to keep it alive, it looks like. He's going to be able to get in, get a full scout on how many uh, workers are mining that gas, just make sure there's no very strange roach shenanigans coming his way. He may eventually get taken down. What I'm keeping an eye on here is add-ons. Okay, so it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing Cloak Banshee here from Cast because he didn't put a tech lab onto his racks, so he should... Okay, Liberator, yes. Um, he's going to be going for that sort of add-on let's play. Reaper finally taken down. What do you yeah, think of Liberator? Liberator and goes into a Viking here, so... Oh, for God's sake. Um, going for the most standard of all the standards here. The Viking, of course, mm -hmm. to uh, be the designated Overlord Hunter. I do have a couple of Marines here to poke away at this Overlord. It's not going to prevent it from scouting anything. But, uh, getting a little bit of right. from there. Actually, he might be able to deny the scout onto the Viking, which is... I mean, it's something. It's not It's not a major uh, moment, but it's something. And in the meantime, though, I think we're probably going to see Stim start on up. The Liberator does come on down uh, as a secondary follow-up to that Viking. And in the meantime, for Denver, everything's looking pretty standard for him. He's resaturated the gas in the main to uh, to its full capacity. Going in for... He's even adding a couple of sport crawlers here, so he's adding one sport crawler ready for the Liberator. But now we have six Hellions popping on out. Let's see whether or not they're able to get anything done. Probably just going to be here to sort of clear off some creep. But, you know, as a Terran, like, a Terran player, if they smell blood, they'll go for the dot. Yes, 100%. Now, Cass, one thing we said for him throughout this tournament is maybe he's been a little bit, uh, he's been a little bit more passive than some of the other players, um, and he doesn't really go for that dive as much as, like, if it was Euphermal, he'd have those Hellions in the main already. Um, Cass is very, very safe in this game. He is going to now try and micro back. He doesn't want to lose any of these Hellions. It, oh, they do manage to make it off a creep. The two of them will almost certainly just one, okay. 
will go down. So not great there for Curse. Meanwhile, the Liberator heading across the map. Overlords have been cleared. But when you see Overlords being cleared like that from a Viking so far from home, is it obvious as a Zerg player that what's coming to follow is probably Not really. I mean, the Viking okay. is like not the most uncommon thing in the world. So uh, it's not super obvious. But we do have already a bit of preparation done here for Denver. He's got that uh, initial Spore Crawler in position. This is not the best Liberator map of all time either. Oh, he's just not in range. Nicely queued out there by Kaz. He's going to get a little bit of damage here which is quite nice. And I think something that is important to note, and I, I think um, Denver is also very well aware of how Koss likes to play, but we talked about it earlier. He's playing a lot of mech lately, a lot of mech. And there hasn't really been a secondary scout. To, I mean, I guess this Overlord here does see a decent number of Marines, so he's probably well aware that it is bio. But it'll be interesting to see how he has, ends up adapting to that, because Koss hasn't played that much bio in this tournament. Uh, no, he has been... <laughs> favoring that mech he's played bio a couple of times but not nothing nothing to scoff about really he's not been fully focused on it we've seen a lot of mechs on him um now on golden wall i i do think as the game gets longer it can favor the zerg creep spread you really only have to focus on like two avenues as opposed to two or three and you can see denver's creep is already it's not bad how many queens does he have six so i'd expect that to explode pretty soon once he knows he's dealt with all of this liberator pressure and such did liberator go down yes um, when? <laughs> Eight worker kills, though, overall, is still a it's pretty sizable chunk. And the Liberator is not a unit that scales particularly well. So losing that Liberator, not really that much of a concern, uh, especially since he is playing Bio. Fourth base, though, coming up for Denver relatively early on. And this is one of the nicer areas of Golden Wall for, for Zerg, that you can get this this fourth base in sort of in a line. There's a lot of uh, base options. Just, like if it was you, Thermal, he'd have The gold there. base, though, for Koss, puts him in an interesting position where a three base push could be a very, very dangerous thing uh, that Denver needs to consider. This gold base, not only does it provide a forward position from which to launch that attack, but obviously the income boost as well is a massive deal. And if he mines this out, that provides uh, the that provides yeah. the ability for him to go down this south side and, and pressure the main from that uh, sort of mineral wall. Yeah, I, I really like it if you can get the Golden Defender. Of course, it's very difficult specifically against Mutalisks and Banelings. Muters can sit sort of just behind it and, and almost outrange a turret or at least dart in and out very efficiently. We do have a drop here for Cast 16 Marines unloading. And there's actually not a lot here. Is there any Banelings on the map? Yeah, 11. But where are all those Lings going? Um, cause this is a very good angle for Cast to hide in. As the Banelings show up, you should load up and get out of this. That was pretty good. I don't know how the trade went in the end. It's almost impossible to tell, but it's not even. good from Cass. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's like not, nothing to be super concerned about, I would say. Uh, we've got Drilling Claws on the way, 2 2 well on the way here for Cass as well. He's getting himself a tiny bit of an upgrade lead, which tends to be the case when you're playing against Mutaling Bane. Um, nothing to be too concerned about there for Denver. But that does open up for some very, very strong timing windows. Uh, I would not be surprised, especially with this gold base to see Koss try to hit a timing with that 2-2 because he is going to start mining out of this gold base a lot earlier than Denver is going to start mining out of his third and fourth base. So uh, this is something that obviously I don't think Koss is going to be planning to go all in or anything. He does have fourth CC on the way. But I do think that we'll be looking to he'll be looking to apply some pressure and he's already going to be moving out to clear off some of the creep and set himself up for the longer game and set himself up for that later push. The army supply penguin. It's pretty in favor right now of our Terran player, who is starting to push out a little bit with some of these units. He is going uh, tankless, which I like, because tanks in this, they, especially on this map, I feel are pretty hard um, to get in a position where they cannot be flanked. Um, yeah, I really everything... like that he made two to sort of defend that gold base. Yes. And then just kind of switched up into yeah. his anti mutilant chain play. Uh, I wouldn't really read too much into the army supply difference at this okay. point in time. You tend to have a little bit of a dip playing Mutaling Bane because you're spending so much money on the uh, the Mutas which, and the Lings, okay. which are both very, very supply efficient. And also then a lot of money into Banes, which obviously doesn't add any supply. But um, it is definitely something to note that Cost should be maxing out around the time where he gets that 2-2 finished up. So uh, if he can hit with 2-2, he can be in a very, very strong position to at least try to pressure and maybe deny this fifth base. Uh, it's been a, he's done a good job at delaying the, the creep for now, but it is being respread by Denver here. Denver with all of these queens is doing a pretty good job here of keeping that spread. Cass is attempting to land his fourth base. There is a uh, Ling there, but that'll be dealt with pretty quickly by seemingly one Widow Mine. Go on, do oh, you know. no, that Ling, that Ling is actually like drawing the whole army to uh, the point yeah, where he, he has to do that. <laughs> He hasn't entirely missed his window, but he's missed a lot of his 2-2 window. One Ling to rule them all. 
one ring to bind them. Sorry. Uh, yeah, very nice <laughs> counter-attack. This is my favorite thing about this map for Zerg players. This area where you can wrap around here and hit this fourth base, or third if it is to do that. And this is a massive counter because this is not a planetary yet. There's nothing here. Say goodbye to your workers. The cast is moving out for the middle of the map. He's going to cancel so many Banelings right now, and his army is substantial. 141 army supply. Yeah, this is a really, really weird situation. So many Banelings are counter-attacking. Like Denver may have even over-committed attack yeah. here. Uh, there are a decent number of Banelings currently morphing. Some of them will be cancelled, but here they come. The splits are going to need to be good. The initial ones are not great, but the Thor tanks, so many so of those great. Baneling shots. Kass is down in supply, but it's mostly workers, and he's sitting on top of the production now. There are still some Mutas here, but I mean, the Mutas are great, but they're not amazing against this kind of an army composition. I feel like Denver may have moved out at the worst possible moment. Mm -hmm. While he is clearing out the gold, he's done a lot of damage with his links. Mules are definitely something that needs to be considered, and with oh. more and more bases going down for Denver, Cost is in a great position to just continue steamrolling through this economy. Yeah, he's moving up to the north, and I don't hate that decision. He doesn't want to overcommit, but if he can take down these two northern bases, he'll put himself in such a great spot with Mules to defend. We do have the Banelings rolling back in right now. Marauders in the front. Marines are trying to rally backwards. Run, boys, run! They do a pretty good job, actually. A lot of Marines left standing. The four will finally go down, but it's hardly any... No, the four lives! And it takes out the last of the mutants on the way. Run, you big chunky bitch. There we go. It manages to get away. It will finally go down to one of those queuing lanes. And it does look like Cass has been cleaned up. And Cass right now has only 25 workers. Oh my god, look at the resources lost. It's 5,000 in favor oh. of Cass. But he's just lost so many workers yeah, that I think Denver may well have done just enough. Uh, Cass was in a really good spot there. It was a really, really close situation. But... The counterattack for Denver may have just been enough. There is going to be one more push in this for Koss. He still has an army supply lead right now, but Plus he weapons. needs to make big damage happen with this push. He's pushing in 26 Banelings, Penguin. Only a couple more in the production tab as well. So there is a possibility here. If Marauders can maybe tank this, if he can split like Maru and... Uh, have a good job. I like this Widow Mine position as well. Just to the right here. If he can get those muters, if he can get the Banelings to get hit by the Widow Mine, there's definitely a chance. There is still a four here as well to buffer, to tank, and plus three weapons is four seconds away from Cass. And it is only that one upgrade, but it makes all the difference in these trades as this game right now is the closest it could possibly be. Yeah, Caso is definitely leaning more yeah. to all in here. He's not reproducing his workers. He's not reproducing that 4 CC. Uh, he is leaning into this attack. He knows that it's his best chance at winning this game. I like that he's clearing up the creep that, that lessens some of the power of potential Baneling flanks. And Denver is evacuating this base. I do think this is the right decision. He's definitely identified that there is not a focus on economy here from Kass. All he has to do is survive. Yeah. And uh, he's adding on two more bases on the bottom side here which I think is just also fantastic decision-making. Already moving some of these drones away in preparation for that toss. I feel like he may just be taking too long. I, I mean, I don't really know why he's taking so long. There is no long game plan for him. Uh, and, and if you're Denver right now, what is your answer? Is to get as many lings and banes as you just possibly can? Yeah, it's really just survive? mass bane here. Yeah, Super right mass bane. He's already got 29 now. He's adding on eight more. Yeah, and with number. creep on its side, I really don't... I feel like Koss just waited a little bit too long. We'll have to see if he can break through this. He's picking off the creep here, but I, more and more time is going into producing more and more banelings. The, the Mutas are doing a good job picking up a couple of those mines. He needs really good mine hits, but these initial baneling hits are pretty easy to start things off. More and more banelings entering the fray, and, uh, well, Koss needs a miracle from these Widow Mines. Split, Koss, split. He splits, uh, I mean, he's not been playing more of split simulator, let's put it that way. They're not enough, unfortunately, and Denver pushes Koss back. Denver with triple the work account will be able to clean Koss up. He should be getting ready for a big counterattack right now, and unfortunately... For the Ukrainian, oh my god, even that made him uh, It does look like he is out of time and out of luck in game one. Now, this is uh, just the first map of the best of three, and I think Kass made some positive moves, but just a little bit of indecision seems to have been the story of Kass's career. And GG, Denver goes up one down. Yeah, I mean, that was a really, really close game. I think um, a lot of that came how much Denver committed to that mm. counterattack, which at the, end of the, at, the, at the end of the day, it killed off the vast majority of of Kasa's workers so it ended up working out quite nicely for him but it left him very very close to being able to be broken uh so it was it was a very very close situation there Kass, unfortunately not quite able to 
pull it out there, but Denver showcasing the power of, of a run by Zinc. And really, that's just uh, on a large map like Golden Wall, Beetling Bane, when you counterattack like that, is such a big deal. And I think, honestly, he was planning for that exact kind of a move out from yeah. Koss. He knew that was coming. There's no, you don't counterattack with half of an army if you expect your opponent to be at home. That was very clearly a calculated decision that was designed to force Koss into a position where he was going to be all in. Yeah, definitely. My StarCraft just needs to reopen, mate. So I'm, I'm on my way back. Yeah, sure. Crashed as it likes to. Uh, so as of right now, this is very important for Denver. Do we have any updates on any of the other results in this in this um, round of games? Let us take a look. Seems that Clem is up one for against Gung Fu. Showtime is up one out against Arctur. So every series right now is one zero. Uh, with Showtime, Denver in this series, Bly being up against Sparks and Clem being up against Gung Fu. All the results going as they would be expected right now. Uh, and we'll be getting into our map too as soon as Starcraft decides to stop being an ass. There we go. Uh, why is it just us in here? Uh, Denver linked this. Hmm. Oh, why does it say I'm in the lobby? I'm not in the lobby. Oh my. Uh, it just takes a second. It might be lobby bug. In which case, we'll just uh, uh, just leave the party and join separately. It'll work. No, I'm just gonna relog real quick. Okay, cool. That's the best solution to lobby bug. Yeah, um, I need to see if I can join off of them. Denver, Denver, Denver. Can you... All right, I'm back. Uh, we'll be getting into the game very shortly, guys. We just had a small lobby bug. It happens far too often. It happens. Um, I've asked them for the link again. Because I don't have them on my friends yep. list, I don't think. Nope. I like that they, a while ago, they added a feature on Wikipedia where it gives you a notification. It's like, this has been updated since you last refreshed. Yeah, it's so good, right? Oh. Um, let's see, you know, here we go. So, Pillars of Gold will be our next map. Here we go. We're I'm sorry, it is Pillars Dor Ek. Dor Ek. <laughs> oh, no, Ek is ladder, is ladder edition. Okay. Yeah, it is. Pillars Dor. Pillars Dor. That makes oh, sense wait. because of, uh, what else has got Dor in it? It's like a perfume or something, right? Uh, I'll just Google like ba Ballon d'Or. Ballon d'Or, yeah, that may be what I'm thinking of. Oh, oh, oh yeah, it makes sense. I have no idea what. I'm All right, maybe, we're maybe I'm just thinking of Ballon d'Or. We don't have to. We don't have to kill time anymore, Grant. We're ready to go. Pillars of gold. I do appreciate a good pillar of gold. Yeah, now this is the second least common map that we've seen so far in this tournament. So we are seeing in this series alone, both of the maps that I've only seen like three or four times in total over like two weeks. Yeah, so here we go. I mean, I'm uh, I'm excited. We're very close to, to being correct with our predictions, buddy. Yeah, because in the top right, he's leading this series. We both predicted him to take it 2-0. Sorry, Cass. Uh, he is sponsored by Team... K-A-P from France. It's Denver. Facing off against the red Terran player in the bottom left who almost messed up our predictions, but hmm. not so fast, Mr. Starcom Cass. He is our red Terran player. He is... I mean, he's doing his best, and he's, he played a great game in the mm. last game. He, that Thor micro, specifically, was very sick. Big shout-outs to that. Yeah, and Cass, Cass isn't going to do right. It, he just doesn't. I haven't seen him do it once. He's very much. Oh, I mean, so I don't insane. know if I've ever seen no. Cost Cheese ever in my life. Like, I've been around. Yeah. I remember the days where Happy and Cost would open yeah. DC first into triple racks every game in every matchup in Wings of Liberty. Yeah, the the Russian Terran players there was always. A little, there was a little bit of variation where sometimes they would go gasless racks, CC racks, racks. Oh, I remember. Like, it was always hyper macro focus from them. It's always been the way that Koss has yeah. played. Uh, Happy ended up later on in his career changing things up a little bit, but he was still very much one of those guys who just, like, had his opening. He liked his opening. And uh, Koss, I mean, they were teammates back in the day as well, both of them on Empire. Yeah, the yeah time. Empire. Completely but, uh, correct. Uh, I, I am the StarCraft Jeopardy champion, Grant. You you know this. I know my I know my stuff. Did you say you're the StarCraft trivia champion? StarCraft Jeopardy champion. I won six episodes of StarCraft Jeopardy, dude. Did you ever play against Rotty, though? 
No, he wasn't invited. That would that be actually really fun. <laughs> that dude knows like, everything about I everything. Also love Spear Dragon. Um, do you know how yeah. Jeopardy works? No, because I'm English. So there's a double. There's like a double Jeopardy thing where like yeah. you bet some of your points. Okay. And uh, if you get it wrong, you lose your points. Mm -hmm. But it's a really good way to just close the game out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fear Dragon was up by like 2,000. It was like 17k to 15k. Yeah. And he got a really easy daily double, or a really, yeah, really easy daily double for yeah. his betting. And he bet all his points and he got it wrong. Oh. It's one of my favorites, like all of StarCraft. What was the question? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was in a category that was about alliteration. Okay. Um, and the hint was like, it was something along the lines of, um, like, it was like, it was something about like something to do with, the most popular StarCraft musician and Shakespeare. And uh, he said theatrical Templar when it was very obviously Tempo's Tempest. Great. And he lost. I, I want a lot of those. I, I, want, I paid for my Netflix for a year from that show. It was great. <laughs> That's so sick. Uh, in this game so far, we see a 1-1-1 one, one, one out of cast. Let's see if he throws down an add-on onto that Rax. It doesn't look like he's going to. Um, usually if you see a tech lab go down, then you know it's going to be either a Raven, less common, Battle Cruiser, or a, um, or most commonly a Cloak Banshee opening. It looks like we'll see Viking or Liberator once again here. From Cass, possibly, very unlikely, we'll see a very fast Medivac, um, but I don't think I've seen that in about 10 years now. Uh, so it should just be a Viking, most likely. I would imagine he's going to play Bio. I think that's the game plan. Uh, he is going for, um, a Fusion Core here. Oh, it I'm is Battle Cruiser. Yeah, just looking at this map, though, it's a very open map. So mech mm -hmm. tends to be weaker on these kinds of maps. So, yeah, I mean, it is totally to reasonable to go BC into bio. Um, it's it's a little bit less natural a transition. So, like, he could well go back here. But, oh, this is actually, he's going, we got a Roach Warren coming in from Denver. Yeah, this is probably a really interesting uh, dynamic, right? Yes. We have the... If you count, if you go for like a roach all in, BCs don't kill roaches very fast. No. So uh, it's a great counter to BCs, but if you wait a little bit too long, all of a sudden you don't have things that shoot up. So it's a very interesting dynamic. But this is a really old school roach ling all in. Yeah. Uh, it is scouted. Yeah, it's a oh, very is... important scout. Oh my very lordy lord. Scout. Uh, Cass has done so well with his Reapers in the last couple of games, and now he's going to be very annoying. He will eventually lose a re... Oh, dude, I'm actually really, really scared. He's gone really fast 3cc. The BC's not going to be oh. out in time. The bunker's not going to be done in time, and it will be done in time, but there's nothing to put in the bunker. Oh my god, dude, I'm really scared for Cass. Hellion's now seeing Wait, the Wait, coming in. Okay, there's a wall. Yeah, the wall is complete. Uh, a couple of Marines will immediately jump into the bunker, but we already have Ravages in position. These Hellions are going to be doing so well to buy time right now. This is exactly what Cass Oh, I like that they're going after the Ravager here. They yeah, might be able to actually pick it that up. Yeah, does damage to it. How far off is the Battle Cruiser Penguin? Three quarters it's of the way down. almost complete. The oh, the Battle Cruiser doesn't down. automatically hold this. That's the other concern, right? The Battle Cruiser kills these units very, very slowly. The Hellions, yeah. though, doing a really good job laying down quite a lot of hurt. The SCV is holding the line long enough for the second bunker to finish up. This is a very, very committed attack by Denver uh, as far as tech goes, but he has a pretty decent economy behind it. Five words so. behind this. And I mean, Cass is down to half of that now, less than. He's taking so much damage, I'm sure, yet the Battle Cruiser is going to be able to clean this up slowly but surely, but so many workers going down. Now, Cass does have to see. He does have mules, which means like that, that 24 workers is closer to 240. Oh, but if the first CC gets cancelled, oh, and it's going to. Is it? No. Uh, I don't think it actually is. I actually really like that he went for the BC teleport a little bit earlier than would. Yes. That's going to buy him enough time to get in there before the spore finishes up. Gives him eight worker kills, which is not going to uh, even the stage by any stretch of the no. imagination. But it's a good bit of counter damage. He needs to get some done. He maintains the BC with about 60% HP. He's going to get a couple of overlord kills if he wants as well. Uh, no secondary BC coming out, which is probably better in the long term, given that there's a Spire coming out for Denver now. Koss, he found some 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 reverse damage. What he's got three three orbitals now. He's not dead. He's in a horrible position. I'm not going to pretend that he's not. But he definitely isn't dead. He's supply blocking his opponent by quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, five more overlords are up in it, though, so that won't be a concern long term. Yeah, a few laser overlords coming out here to break that supply block. But, but Cass is still continuing to find damage here, and this is nice. Behind this, it is, of course, Bio, as Penguin predicted. 
Uh, we're seeing Stim coming, we're seeing plus one, only plus one weapons coming, because I imagine we're only on one eBay due to lack of money. Uh, no double eBay, just has a started armor. This um, battlecruiser will continue to be an annoyance. Blink is back up so to go home and get repaired if it chooses to do so. Queens uh, are in a very good number right now, but but Cuss is doing, he's, he's, you know, look at the supply, he's not too far down. He's producing he kills on the beast, my dude. Yeah, that's that's insane. I mean, to be fair, some of it's links. Yes. But um, but like that's 12 workers, that's really nice. I think he's killed like four or five overlords. Uh, four yeah. overlords. Um, oh, he's got to be careful. Though. I like that he's... Oh, he's actually going for a teleport back into the main Oh my here. god, that's oh, so brave. That is brave. There is a queen here, but he's going to be able to get a couple more workers. I uh, guess one more worker at the very least. Queen, right? uh, I don't think it's worth pushing. I think it's better for him to just go after the, the, the yeah. drones. Kill three, four, maybe even five, like six more drones. Die, though, right? I love it. I love it. He gets out. It's probably going to die to the mutas. But like, oh, yeah. 30 kill battle cruiser. I think it's safe to say that that BC did its job. Yeah, definitely. And now take a look at the work account. It was like a 40 difference. Now it's like less than 20 as Cass is producing nothing but triple SCVs. Uh, and he's muling up as well. His economy really isn't as bad as it could have been. His upgrades are ahead of his opponents. Uh, his his army supply is equal. The battle cruiser finally goes down, taking down a bit of our army supply. But Cass has a lot of tanks. He's fine against any Link counterattacks right now. I honestly am quite impressed with this... Uh, survival here from Cass. Yeah, we're in a position where Denver now has a massive amount of map control with the Mutas and the Lynx, yes. and he's got plenty of space to just creep to his heart's content. But as you said, Cass has gotten himself back into the game. He's got mm -hmm. pretty solid income. He's still down 20 workers, but he has mules, so that kind of evens out. Uh, he's, he's alive, which is very, very impressive, and he's got enough tanks that... As long as he babysits the tanks well, he doesn't lose those tanks too badly. He puts himself in a decent position where it's going to be very, very difficult to take an engagement against that many tanks. Yes. So, you know, he's put himself in a position where he's set himself up to a point where he's like, all right, Denver, I'm going to make the army that is the easiest for you to make a mistake against. And I'm just going to kind of hope you make a mistake because that is the position that they're in. Cost needs a favor, but he's done a real good job. That BC was sick. Is Denver looking to push right now? He's making a lot of banings. He's at the edge of creep. Mutas flying into the main where there is uh, one missile turret only. I like to see two in these scenarios. Uh, actually, the Mutas have decided to, to go elsewhere. Um, oh, Denver's actually on the uh, Denver? Uh, Cass is actually on the right now, and, and Denver is, is looking pretty defensive. Denver's creep is really good, right? Despite like the way the game's gone. Yeah, I mean, he's had queens. He's had uh, basically nothing creep all game and I think that's what causes for here is gonna be Bailing run by oh god oh god oh god eight oh, workers god. go down <laughs> uh I mean it, this is one of those positions right where it's like generally speaking that would not have been eleven in the end so is better bailings, but given that cost is already struggling a little bit economically I think that's actually oh, pretty man. worth uh he's gotta be a little bit careful not to overdo it with those kinds of trades I mean he's already lost about a thousand more free doors uh, another attack Ooh. coming in here on the the focus fire coming out of the banelings. Ah, uh, there's just a little bit too many of them. Just not enough uh, marines remaining here to be able to save the tanks from the mutas and the cleanup on the tank count there is a huge deal. GG is called. Denver makes it 